I'm Daniela Staging Designs. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's tutorial, we have a couple little pouches and they're so cute. They're for K&A's sewing round. And so in this video, I show you how to do it two different ways. So, and again, there's multitude of ways to do it as I explain in once we get going in the video, but I'm just gonna show you these two. So we have one with a zipper down the middle and this is also from K&A sewing round. This, <laughs> this is their um, little like mascot for the company and with all the different sewing paraphernalia. Like, so there's really cute little scissors, buttons, bows, and um, measuring tape. <laughs> I can do that. So this is the one option where it goes right down the middle. And then of course, of what did I do? I forgot to add the little D-ring tab to the adorable tomato. It's so cute. <laughs> so this one, the zipper only goes from here to here. There. And it is so cute. And then look at the lining. It's all sewing related. So then when you open it up, it's just like sewing paraphernalia. And it's just like, it's so cute. I absolutely love it. And again, I'm only showing you two ways to do this. You can do it however you please, but I hope you guys enjoy the sewing tutorial for the tomato. So this is the super adorable tomato pouch. So I, I see the string and all I really want to do is like add a string to add like the little like, what is it? Like a little tomato end or a little strawberry. Like I really want to add a dangle factor to this, but it's like, so this is all the waterproof canvas. So it's your front, your exterior and your lining is all in waterproof canvas. And then you have a little zipper tab to be able to add if you wanted to do like a little D ring. There are multiple ways that you can utilize these for a pouch. It, it really is just because I, I might do it this way in the video. It's not the only way that you could do it. It's completely your preference on what you're wanting to do. So I will show a couple different ways. So one, I will be using the tomato pouch. And then in the other option, I'm just gonna be using some waterproof canvas that I happen to have around my house. So that way I can show you guys two different ways that you guys can be able to sew this way. And again, it is those two ways are not the only ways that you could utilize these. It is literally your imagination and your desire is the, like, what am I trying to say here? The, your li only limit is your imagination. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. So your only limit is your imagination and what you want to do with these. So one of the other strikers, she did it to where it was like a little bit of a, a small little, little gusset around the zipper in. And then hers opens almost all the way. Like, so there's like her zipper goes practically the whole way around. And there's only like a little bit right here that's got a little gusset end. And so it, it opens a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out and you don't need any interfacing. You won't need anything else. Everything you'll need is just in here, depending on the way that you want to do it. So if you do the zipper down the middle, you don't need anything else except for a, a zipper tape, zipper pole, and a little D ring. So those are the extra additional things that you will need for this. If you want to do it to where there's like a little zipper that goes up here, you will need a couple additional little piece sewing pieces so we'll put little tabs on the ends of the zippers so those are just little additional pieces so you can use probably use red and you can use a waterproof canvas or you can use cotton woven if you want to it doesn't matter either way so we'll get those two and so yeah I'll show you guys all the options all right so this is going to be so we're pretending that this is the tomato pouch and this is option, one of the options that you could do for it. So we're going to take one of the exteriors and we're going to cut it in half. And then you're going to, after you cut your exterior together, you're going to then grab one of your lining pieces and you're going to do the exact same thing. Right down the middle. Okay. You're also going to need to grab a little half inch D-ring or I hope it's a half inch because we'll find out here in a second. It should be a half inch. Okay, so if we, yeah, if, I, if it's an inch wide and I mark this in half and yeah, yeah, so yeah, a half inch. <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, yeah, so a half inch D-ring. You'll need a zipper pull and then some zipper tape. So for your zipper tape, no real exact measurements or anything. I just like to make it a little bit longer than my circle. Trim that down. Well, I guess I can measure it and let you know what it is. So this is eight and a quarter. So that's what I have mine cut to is eight and a quarter. And then go ahead and then heat seal your ends. Okay. And then for right now, we don't need to add our zipper pole. If you want to add a business label, oh, I need to make more. If you want to add a label, if I can grab one. Go ahead and add it now. And so I'm probably going to add mine to the back. So I'll go ahead and do that before I forget. Okay, got my label on. And so I can actually set that aside. So I'll have to think about that for a little bit. All right, we're going to grab our zipper. We're going to grab one of our exteriors. Let's find the Cinta. And then we'll find the center of our zipper. All right, so we're going to line up the center notch of our exterior with the zipper tape. We'll clip those two together. And then we're gonna base this together at an eighth of an inch. You can extend your stitch length out. We're going to grab our lining piece. We're going to flip this over. So this is the wrong side of the zipper. We're going to find the center of our lining. And again, we're going to line it up with the center. So it's hard to see the mark. So we're going to line it up with the center of our notch from our exterior. So once we got that. <laughs> I'm grumpy corgi. All right, when you get that all clipped together, you're gonna go ahead and sew that together at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, once you got that sewn together, we're going to then open this up and we're going to press that seam. If it helps, you can clip your exterior and your lining together to keep those edges lined up. And then we're going to then press this open. You don't want to yank on your zipper too hard because that can cause your zipper to go wavy. If you want to take this over to an iron, you can press it. Or if you want to just finger press, it's totally up to you. If you're doing this with the tomato, it will be all waterproof canvas. So it's definitely okay to iron it. And then you go ahead and top stitch the top, or yes, you're gonna go ahead and top stitch this down. All right, we're gonna flip this and we're gonna do it to the same to the other side. So make sure that you have your other side is facing the, well, well first, let's find our center, because that'll be helpful. And then we're going to make sure that our is facing the right direction. And it, because it is a half circle, it should only be able to face one direction. We're going to line up our notch with our mark. We're going to clip together. And then we're going to, of course, then base this together. Flip it over. We're going to find the center for our lining piece. And line that up. 
Once you get this all clipped together, you're going to sew it down at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then we're going to pull these back, making sure that everything is still lined up. And press that down. You can finger press or take it over to your iron. And once you got that all pressed down, go ahead and top stitch. All right, let's go ahead and then add our zipper. So I want my zip, I personally want my zipper to be up at the top and then pull down to open if you want to have it. So if you want to do that, in, insert it onto the bottom. If you would rather have your zipper pull at the bottom and then pull up to open, insert it at the top. So I'm going to. Go ahead and add that on real quick. Also, I forgot to say, and then take note of how your zipper teeth are before you pull them apart. So this side is just a little bit higher. And so when you add your zipper pull on, putting those on one side at a time, we're gonna look in through the back and we're pushing the teeth up through the back. And as they come back out, if it looks the same here as it did before you pulled them apart, you'll have a very nice, pretty looking zipper every single time. Okay, so now I can go ahead and set that aside for the moment. Now to work with our tiny little D-ring. So I put a mark in the middle so it'd be at the half inch. I'm going to fold one side in to meet that middle mark. And then I'm gonna sew it down the one side and then back up the other. So I sew, sew it down the one. I'm gonna take my other side, I'm going to fold that in, meet that line, sew across the bottom, and then rotate and then turn back up. Okay. And then go ahead and then add your D-ring. And then wherever you want to add your D-ring, so if you want to add it off to the top, off to one side, you could do that. You could add it right in the middle above your zip, above your zip on your zipper line. So you can add it there, off to the side. I think I'll do it over the zipper. Keep it all in the, in the middle. And so we're going to have a little bit of overhang. We don't need a ton. Let's... I'll measure just to make sure. So we have a quarter inch of overhang, or at least I am doing a quarter inch of overhang. And then we're going to base that down. We're going to then grab our exterior and we're going to lay that right sides together. So right on top of your front, we're going to clip that. Oh, before we get too far, you want to open your zipper up a little bit. Okay. And then make sure everything is lined up. Oop, I'm a little slightly off. There you go. That looks better. So go ahead and clip all the way around. And your back exterior is gonna be a little bit bigger than your front. And that's okay. So you can see mine is a little bit bigger. So we're going to do it with your, this, your lining side. We're gonna do that facing up. So that way we can see where the edge of our material is. And we're gonna just sew this together all the way around. We're just gonna baste it together at an eighth of an inch and you can go ahead and lengthen your stitch. All 
Okay, now you're gonna grab some scissors and you're going to trim off the excess of your lining and then you can also trim off the excess of your zipper tape. And then the part for your little, the D-ring tab, if you can cut around it, yay, but if you end up cutting it, it's not gonna be the end of the world. So there, there's that one. All right, and because we cut our zipper, let's go ahead and reheat seal the ends of our zippers. Or at least I like to reheat heat seal them. All right, here is one of the important things. We're gonna pick an area. So the area that we're going to turn our bag through. And we wanna make like at least two to three inches. So I'm gonna go off to the side and then in this area, so I wanna do it at a quarter inch seam allowance. Oop, let's go back down to my regular. And you wanna sew through just your, the lining with the zipper and then your two exteriors. So my lining back is still over here. So we're gonna sew that together. We're gonna to do probably like two to three inches. pretty good. Make sure to back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, now we're gonna grab our lining and we're going to have our linings be right sides together. And so then we're gonna need to flip it over because this lining is going to be a little bit bigger than what we have currently and go ahead and clip all the way around. And then this time we're going to sew from the exterior sides facing up so we can see where the edge of that one is versus the lining. And we're going to start, so we have our quarter inch seam allowance right here. So there's our quarter inch and then that's our eighth inch. We're gonna start here on this end and we're gonna sew at a quarter inch all the way around and we're gonna end over here at this side, okay? And so we're not gonna sew across this. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. So, you, and your seam allowance is going to be slightly off if you go based off of the teal, or for my case, the teal, because it is a little bit larger than the white part. So you just have to kind of be mindful of where your seam allowance is going to be now. And a little trick, because this is already at an eighth inch right here, if I sew an eighth inch further in, that's gonna give me my quarter inch seam allowance. Once you got your, your seam allowance done, we can grab some pinking shears or regular scissors, depending on what you have. And we're going to go around and we're going to trim this down, making sure we don't cut our quarter inch seam, seam stitching or seam allowance. Might be a little tricky to get the pinking shears through this, but just try your best. All right, so we got it all trimmed up. And so now we're going to flip it over. And so through this opening, we're going to turn out our little pouch. Definitely go with at least three, do probably three to four inches, probably go closer to four, make make this a little bit easier for yourself and use a bigger turning hole than I, than I did.
Okay, before I turn this all the way out, we need to close up this opening. And I'm sorry, we're gonna be doing some hand sewing. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be the more tedious part and both pouches, whichever way you decide, at least of the two that I'm showing you in this video, there are a plethora of other ways that you could do these. Like I said at the beginning, you are only limited to your imagination what you can use these for. I am just showing you two ways, but both of the ways that I will be showing you, it turns out better it looks better from the outside if you hand stitch this closed. And I just lost the other end. Because I did do a few practice ones and I stitched it with my machine. And you can see it from the outside when you turn this all the way out. Because right as I catch a needle, my exteriors are right here. So if you stitch that, you will see it. And I don't want to see it. I want to have a pretty little pouch. So I'm just going to be doing a simple ladder stitch, hopefully, <laughs> but I'm not going to bore you to death watching me sew the whole thing. I'm going to get this turned down. Yeah, I say that and then the song, turn down for what, pops in my head, of course. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is super goofy and... Movie quotes, song lyrics, random stuff will pop in when I hear certain words. Because I'm a goober. Oh, what did I just watch recently? It was an older 90s movie. Don't be a goofus. Don't be a goofus. Oh, what were we watching? Oh my gosh, now it's gonna now it's, that's gonna bug me. Oh, it's the sand lot. That's what it was. And the kid says, like, don't be a goofus. <laughs> so now I really, now I like the word goofus. It's funny. I totally forgot about that word. All right, so I got this clip together. Sorry if I went off a little my frame. If it's not, like, perfectly circular, it's, it'll, it'll be okay. You just want to try your best to keep it somewhat circle. Or circular. There we go. I can say words. So I'm going to go back through the middle-ish somewhere. Hopefully you guys can see. Oh gosh, that's going to be a pain in the butt. And then I'm going to go through the middle of my th thread on the end. So that way I kind of, it loops it together. So then it can't accidentally pull itself out or untie itself because sometimes double knotting it just isn't enough. So now with that looped, he's not going anywhere. Oops. All right, so this I'm just gonna basically show you quickly what I'm, what I'm doing. So I'm just going in one side and I'm trying to only stay to the, ins to the inside. I'm not going all the way through. So pull that through, trying not to have my thread knot. And then I'm gonna go through, kind of like almost directly across from it, and then do the exact same thing on the opposite side. This one's gonna be a little bit harder because it's got more of the layers. So if you have a thimble, go ahead and grab your thimble. And then make sure when you're working with your thread, only grab as much as you feel comfortable without knotting and I definitely grabbed more than I am comfortable with. And then I'm gonna pull this all the way through. You don't have to do it like this. Absolutely not. I this is just one way that I learned how to close things off. And I'm going to trim this excess. Oops. So however you feel comfortable closing the pouch off please please do so you do not have to do exactly as I do let's try to I will try to keep it here so that way it can be seen 
if I don't get my fingers in the way. Just gotta pull through on that side. And then I'm gonna go to the other side. Go through just a little bit. And again, trying not to get these to not. Try to hold those over there. And then help push that down. And you can already see it's starting to already close together right there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this part. Okay, now that I got it all closed up, it looks really nice. I'm going to tie this off, so I'm going to go back kind of in the middle, a little bit down if I can, like right along the edge, just a little bit. And then I'm going to take my, my end that's not attached to the needle. I'm going to loop it around my needle. I did that twice. I'm going to hold that, push the needle all the way through the rest of the way. And I'm going to pull all the thread through and then pull it tight and that's going to knot it off. And there we go. Definitely did not need that much thread, but it's okay. All right. Now that we got that all closed up, now we can turn it out and take a look. Make sure you roll out all those corners, or corners, all the curves. And there we go. I'm like, there are no corners. All right. And then here it is. Whoa. There we go. It's so cute. Let me zoom out. There we go. And we got a cute little pouch. It's so stinking cute. All right, so we could either add like we can um, instead of doing like a D ring right here, if you wanted to do like a key ring instead, you, you could use whatever you want. If you want to use like a little bit bigger of a piece and then you could put one of those little like the ones that have like the little lobster claw D ring things that are it's all, like all one thing. Wait, I think I have one. Oh, I have all the options here. All right, so if you wanted to do a split ring for like what you use for like keychains and stuff, you could do one of that and so then you could easily attach to something. Or if you wanted to cut a larger piece of webbing, or if you could use, yeah, you could use webbing, you could use cotton woven, your preference, and you could use one of these where it's got the D ring and the little lobster claws. Or if you happen to know of half inch ones that have like little hooks like that you could use one of those it's totally your preference on what you want to use you don't have to do just a d-ring but this is super cute and then when you open it up you have your little pouch very accessible 
All right, let's let's stuff a bunch of clips now. Let's see how let's see what we can do. Since it's a sewing round, let's stuff a bunch of sewing stuff in there. Holy cow, that can actually hold quite a few. All right, let's pull out the dragon. Wow, okay, we're getting lots of clips in. Oops, as I drop them. No, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> wow, and there's still even, I could probably put some more in there, but there we go. You could use it for pretty much it, like whatever you want. Well, now that at least now you know how to do option one. And then what's cool is you can do that exact same thing just using any size circle that you want. If you want to make this into a smaller circle, same steps, just cut them to the size that you would like. All right, I'll get prepped for option number two. All right, here we go. Option number two for the zipper pouch. So again, I have my two exterior, my two lining. I have the little D-ring tab that came with it. You'll need zipper tape. If you want to do use a D-ring, you totally can. You can also use the split ring for or the yeah, split ring for like keychains use. You could use one of the little lobster claw thingies, whatever your preference is for that. A zipper pull. And then we're gonna need to cut two pieces of fabric. And they are two inches long by an inch and a half wide. I just used red, non-directional. Now that I'm looking at it, it is <laughs> way red. <laughs> I should have more likely used like an orange. Yeah, an orange probably would have been better than the red, but oh well, we'll live. I'll live. Here, ready. Now let's, so this is gonna be my first go at this size. My other ones that I've played with are were a lot smaller because I wasn't sure exactly how big this was going to be. So I'm just kind of eyeballing. Yeah, let's check out the edges. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to cut this to eight inches. Yeah, I'm going to go eight and a half. I'm gonna go eight and a half. So we're figuring this out together. <laughs> I've only practiced, I've practiced, made these ones a couple times, but again, not this big. <laughs> so yeah. It's a little long. Okay. So I will say this one is a little bit trickier then option one is, oh, I've never changed my thread color. So I'm gonna change my thread color real, real quick. Okay, I'm gonna start with our little D-ring tab here. We're gonna find the middle, so a half, at a half an inch, marker center, just like we did with our other one. We're going to sew down one side, then we'll put, and then we will go back down the other. Okay, I'm gonna, so again, if you have a label, go ahead and add your label wherever you want to. For this one, I went and added mine to the lining piece. I just didn't really wanna put a big old white, la <laughs> white label on top of my the cute little tomatoes. All right, so I'm gonna say that that is my upright or my top middle. Find my centers. <laughs> like, wait, to make the wing. Okay, wait, the stringy. Okay, trying to line up the artwork here instead. Okay, so there's that. I hope I'm getting it through. Okay. 
Okay, cool. Now I can make it a little bigger. <laughs> This is totally personal preference. It can go a multitude of directions. So it's almost like a non-directional. Okay, so now the fun. <laughs> We're gonna find the center of our, z oh no wait, nope, nope, nope. All right, we need to add our zipper first. So again, take note of what your zipper teeth look like before you pull them apart. Then we're gonna add our zipper pull. One, just putting a little bit of the teeth in at a time and then working together. If you're looking from the back, trying to Push them through evenly. Uh, no. So mine were pretty even coming in. All right, come on, let's try this again. Okay, there we go. There we go. Cool, now we got a pretty looking zipper. All right, we're gonna grab our yeah, yeah, we're gonna do the inch and a half. So it's two inches wide this way and an inch and a half this going this way. We're going to sew this at a quarter inch seam allowance first. And I'm gonna grab my other end while it's still here. Or I'm not gonna take my needle up, I'm just gonna keep it going. If you wanted to interface the little tab pieces, you totally could. I did not. I probably should have, but it's okay. We're going to then fold the piece up. We're going to then push. So this is what it looks like we fold up. We're gonna fold them so that the top of my fabric meets the top of the zipper. And then we're going to fold down on top of the zipper. And then clip that to hold that in place. Stay. We're going to do the same thing to this side. So we fold in half to meet the top of the zipper. And then fold over again. And we're going to clip in place. Come on, cooperate with me. Oh wait, I need to put that on this side because it's going to go in like this. And then we're going to top stitch this. So we're gonna have like, so about an eighth inch, we're right along the edge of the red tab. Right, we're gonna trim off the excess off the sides of our zipper. We're gonna do that to all four. So this is what it should look like. We got a tab on each end with our zipper pole in the middle, or zipper on. All right, we're now gonna line up our ends and we're going to find the middle of our zipper. I'm gonna mark it. Okay, 
And then we're going to take one of our exterior pieces. We're going to then grab our zipper and we're going to put those right sides together, lining up our center mark with our center notch. And this is where I say it gets a little tricky. And you're gonna wanna put little notches in your zipper. And I'm not going very deep. I'm probably going about an eighth inch. This is going to help your zipper lay against the curve. And then if you wanted to put notches into the water, your exterior, you totally can. And then I don't completely clip it. Okay, you, I keep wanting to grab that one. <laughs> You're going to go over there. I keep wanting to, or I normally, I'm not going to clip it all the way around. Because as I go, I will just kind of help it ease it onto itself. We're going to base this together at an eighth inch seam allowance. So let's zoom you guys in. So I have the edge right there. As I get my hand out of the way. So you want to try to keep your zipper tape right up against the edge of your exterior. And this is where having those little notches will help. So I'm actually going to add in some snips to this piece as well. This will just help ease those curves in. And again, I'm not going very deep, about an eighth inch, maybe a skosh more, but nothing super deep because our seam allowance is only a quarter inch. So we're gonna put, we have the right side of our exterior and we're gonna put the right side of our lining. We're gonna put those together. Making sure we line up our top notch. And that's pretty much the only thing that I use to line this up. Or not line it up, but hold it together. I might add one or two clips, but that's really about it. So we're here. And then making sure that that edge is right there. And we're going to sew this at a quarter inch seam allowance. And we're going to, I'm going to try to keep your hand. So my hand, sorry, that hold. I'm sorry. I was out of frame probably for most of that. I forgot that I had zoomed in. I apologize. So my hand is in between. So it's right here. So that's gonna help pull my lining back so that way I keep it maintained and lined up. And then it's helping to keep my zipper flat as well. So just take your time going around these curves. It is very doable. And again, we're doing this at a quarter inch seam allowance. I was meant to, I meant to do something. I forgot to do this on the other side. So you want to measure past the end. So that, that right, there, right there, that's the end of my tab. You want to measure past that 
three eighths of an inch and I totally forgot to do that on the other side. So I'll have to go back and do that. So you wanna go sew past by three eighths of an inch and then turn and then sew off the side. And I'll show you up close what I mean. So I have to still go do it to this side. So, but I did my quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. And then right here, you can see the end of my tab. I went three eighths inch past it. And then I turned and went off the side. That's gonna help get everything put together. And so now let me do the other side. So there's that, there's half, and so three eighths inch right there. To help this in, within your seam allowance, go ahead and I know we already made snips, but I'm gonna make some a little bit bigger. So now that I because now that I know where my actual stitching is. Okay. And then we're going to push this all out. Yay, my zipper actually looks really good. Yay. <laughs> my practice ones that I did, my zipper did not look as nice. So, yay. So make sure you're pushing and rolling those seams, making sure your edge looks really nice. Oh, this is already looking so good. I am excited. All right. Now we're, start we're starting to get into the trickier section. We're not quite completely there yet, but we're getting there. So now we're going to grab our other exterior and we're going to line it up with our notch. Well, actually, first I'm going to make snips in the zipper tape. Again, I'm just making little small ones. And then kind of bend this and then however you need to manipulate your tomato to work for you by all means please do because I know the way I might do it might work for me it may not work may not work for you so whatever is going to work for you please please do to be able to get this to line up and work so we're putting right side of our tomato with the other right side of our tomato and we're lining up the notch with our mark. And I'm just putting a few clips up there, not a ton. Cause it's just, a, I find me personally, I find it easier to not have a bunch of clips in the way. Okay, so we're, our first thing, we gotta make sure that we're lined up with our end of our zipper. And we're just gonna do that at an eighth of an inch. And again, my hand is in between the layers of the tomatoes. So it's gonna help pull this as I, you can see I'm manipulating it. That's gonna help me to keep my exterior lined up with my zipper. And then you might need to double check to kind of push your zipper out of the way. And you want to try to keep your zipper flat as it goes underneath your foot because that will help reduce any potential puckers that you might come across. And again, keeping the edge of our exterior lined up with the edge of our zipper or zipper tape. As I think I just sewed off the edge. Sorry if my hand's in the way. There, 
right, before I forget, I'm going to add my 3 8 inch marks now. Oof. So I don't have to redo anything later. So there's that one. Okay, now we add our other one. So we're taking the right side of our lining and we're going to push that up against the right side of our other lining, which would be the back of our zipper. And we're going to line up our notches on the top. And I'm just gonna put a few, oh yeah. I did this on the other side. I should probably can probably do it again too, because that actually was quite nice. Add a few snips to this side just to make life. Eh, I'm gonna un un unclip it. I'll just reclip. Where am I? There we go. All right, we'll reline those guys up. Whoop, where am I? There we are. Okay, we are lined up there. Add my clip there. Let's drop that. Okay, okay. Uh, that'll do for now. Okay, and we're gonna sew this together at a oh, freaking course. I marked the wrong side. Of course I did. Oh well. Remarking. So for here, so I just need to mainly do the first one. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna come back and do it do it at the other end because trying to go here, go in, and then go up. Eh, maybe I can do it. Let's try. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, that's all lined up. There's that. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if I got somewhat close. Yeah, a little bit bigger. I got it. Okay. All right. Not too bad. I'll take it. And again, just going around at a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure my zipper tape is flat going before going underneath my foot. And I'm keeping my lining lined up with my edge of my zipper tape. And then as you get up to your zipper, if it, or your zipper pull, if you want to pause, make sure your foot's off of your pedal, needle is down. You can adjust where your zipper pull is if you need to get it out of your way. up to my end so I'm gonna mark my three you can't see three it's on that side do, do, do. Boop, 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 boop. So got that marked We are cruising along, and again, we're gonna add some bigger schnips around. That was the stampede of the puppies. Making sure we're keeping our side together for the moment. And we're getting kind of like a little sneak peek of what we're going to be looking like. And then we're going to make sure to roll those seams 
get them looking nice and pretty. Well, at least we'll type we're round one of looking pretty and playing with them. Oh my gosh, I am so excited how well my zip my zipper looks. Okay, I just need to take a moment and admire that because <laughs> that looks pretty darn good because <laughs> here's my practice one and I <laughs> used a pre-made zipper because I was like I didn't want to waste my big good zipper but you can see it does not look as pretty as this one so a lot of lots of lessons learned on this one. Oh, it looks so good okay I'm excited Whew, okay here we go here we go all right so now we're going to sorry I'm getting, up, getting excited we're gonna clip our linings together we're going to then pull our exteriors forward and we're going to line up those notches. Put a couple clips on those guys. So I kind of, I'm kind of smashing the zipper down on the inside. Oh yeah, and good call for myself to remember to open said zipper. Okay, this will be good. Oh, I smash it, it's gonna be a pain, of course. All right, so we're opening the zipper. I don't, I mean, it's not open all the way, but it is at least open. All right, so we're lining up our edges. And then when we get to our seam here, so we push that tab down towards the lining. Oh gosh, they are going to town back there. And so, so it's pushed down towards the lining. And we're clipping this all together. And again, when we get to this side, pushing it down towards the lining. And then, so like our little curves right here. So we're gonna push, if I can get, there we go. We're gonna push all of those. So the seam allowance right here, we're pushing those both sides down towards the lining. I'm gonna double check my other side because I don't think I got that clean of a seam to push down. No, I think mine were, they were going the other direction. Or at least one of them was going the other direction. There we go. Boom the bow. Okay, there you go. Alrighty. So now, <laughs> and now you should have something that looks like a really weird thing. <laughs> okay, and then make yourself a little mark on the bottom of your lining pieces. So I'm gonna make a decent size opening. Maybe I'll go a little bigger. Okay. So we got our turning hole on the bottom. Okey dokey, okey dokey. And then I'm going to sew the lining pieces a little bit shy of three eighths inch. So not quite a, well, maybe a full three eighths. Yeah, screw it. We'll do a full three eighths. <laughs> and then as we get to our seam right here, we're going to then transition down to a quarter inch We'll sew around on the exterior part. When we get back, back to the seam, we're gonna transition into a larger and going back to the 3 8 inch. Make sure to back stitch at your beginning. <laughs> they are full of it tonight. So we're coming up to our seam. Let me see if I can try to zoom you guys in to see what the heck I'm doing. So I'm trying, I'm not gonna go full in three eighths cause we do have our tab right there. So I'm just gonna go in a little bit. And then now that I'm in, I will pivot and transition down to that quarter inch. And then we're cruising at a quarter inch. Okay. 
All right, we're getting back as my hand is blocking, apologies. All right, so we're getting back to where our seam is gonna be. So try to keep the lining part. So right in here, we're gonna try to keep that flat. And one more, okay, there we go. Pivot. Okay, and then there we go. And then we're working our way into the three eighths. And making sure we're stopping at our other end. All right. I'm excited. Zoom you guys back out. All right. So if you have peaking shears, you can take some peaking shears and then go around. So I'm not going to do it right here in the middle. Just going around my edges. And if you don't have pinking shears, you can just make little, you can trim down your seam allowance a little bit and then make snips. Or you can make little triangles, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now through our our <laughs> You guys are crazy, you know that? Oh jeez. Thanks. Hey, hey, hold on. Hey. I said you were crazy. I didn't mean for you guys to come over. Okay. Hi. Why don't you why don't you guys go back to playing? <laughs> We're going to turn the pouch right side out. All right, so I don't, um, yeah, I'll turn it all the way out first. No, no, I, I want to close it up first. <laughs> okay, so we're, all, we're almost there. So just like we did in option one, or technically with this one, we can use the sewing machine because it's going to be tucked down on the inside of the pouch and we don't have to worry about the exterior being attached to it. We can use our sewing machine and I'm going to make snips on this so that way it will make it easier to turn these down. So I'm going to roll those seams out. There we go. And then tuck those down in there. So yeah, just however you want to tuck them down. I know this is not going to look like a curve. I'm going to try to keep it a curve, but it's probably not going to end up looking like a curve. Oh well. It's the inside of the pouch. Curvy-ish. <laughs> All right, so now I can just take and add an eighth of an inch. So we start right here. I'm gonna, so my pocket begins right here. I'm gonna start my sewing just in front of it. And then on the other end, I'm gonna go just past it as well. Reset since the dog said it. And then again, I am just gonna be sewing this at an eighth of an inch. Okay, now the best part, we're going to push the lining in and we're going to smooth out the exterior. And then again, the room is sweated. Okay, rolling those edges. And then of course, you can take this over to your iron and give it a nice press. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited for a tomato.
right? And then I'm, pr finger, I'm pressing my fingers on the inside of my lining, pushing them all the way down. <gasps> oh my goodness! It's so cute! <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. It is so stinky cute. Okay, let me zoom out. Definitely need to go take this over to the iron and give it a nice little press to help get rid of the wrinkles, but they'll all come out. But, oh my gosh, oh, dang it. I was so close to getting those to line up. So close. Oh, that one lined up better. Okay, well, it's okay. It's so stinky cute. I freaking love it. And then the inside... Oh my gosh, this is such a cute little pouch. I am in love, 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 love with this pouch. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is option two. Again, I'm just showing you two options in how you can make these tomato pouches or for that matter, any pouches that are in a little circle like this. If you wanted to do a whole other option, I'll insert said, or not said picture, but I'll insert a picture. This is one of our other strikers. She did it to where it practically opens up the entire way. So if you want to do it that way, you totally can. It is completely up to you how you want to utilize these pieces. But this is such a cute, adorable little pouch. I, I'm in love with it. And where did I put the other one? So again, this is option one with the zipper down the middle. And this was option number two with the zipper at the top. So again, your choice, this is just again, two options that I'm just showing you. You can use them however you want, but either way, they are going to be so stinking adorable. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed these tutorials of how to do the coin pouches, or I should say the tomato pouch. <laughs> All right, and thank you guys for watching. And if you made it this far, I hope you guys consider to like and subscribe. Bye. So I literally, <laughs> I shouldn't have put <laughs> my T-ring tap so far away or I had it like pushed aside. So I totally forgot to add this. I, it, it happened, it took till just now. So I, even after I pressed it, Took was taking pictures and I noticed it on option one. And I'm like, dang damn it, I for, totally forgot to add it. So if, well, in, in this option, it's kind of hard to add them. Okay, no, 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 it's not. So if when you are sewing your your exteriors together, when you have them clipped and this kind of pulled apart and makes that weird like little weird bowl thing if on your so if you put it in between so have it sticking stick out and in between then when you sew it together it will come together and it will stick out to one of your sides so you can put it on the end piece or where your zipper is so then that's where you would add it is when it's in that little filleted thing and then have it stick inside so you have a little bit sticking out and then part of your sewing and then just sew back stitch over the top of it so go over it back and then go forward again and again continuing to keep that at the quarter inch seam loss and then it'll be inside of your tomato but even without the ring tab i'm still in love with this i still love the little tomato it's freaking adorable i can't get over it <laughs>